Hey everyone, so this is a follow-up video to one of my recent ones where I was talking about progress on one of the projects I'm working on. It's kind of a combination endless runner, top-down shooter, as well as a little bit more insight into why I find myself giving up on projects because I mentioned previously that I find myself dissatisfied and that to try to alleviate that, I add more features and I add more assets and then the whole project just becomes cumbersome and it, be, it, it becomes unwieldy and I usually just give up. So that a little bit later, we'll do the technical stuff first because that's probably why you guys are here. So a few things, let's run this. If you've been watching my channel the last few months, this asset probably looks familiar. This is one of the tank assets that I've purchased. So a few things, the treads are animated, that's built right in, I'll quickly review that. As far as the shot, that is something that I added. That's basically just instantiating an orb and there's an emissive material onto it. And the other collision detection that we mentioned in the other boss battleship, when you shoot, it collides and there's a particle system. And if you shoot enough, then the boss, the tank will get destroyed. Something like 50 shots right now. I'll probably change that for the final version. Presuming there is a final version. Okay, so yes, that is working. So what's going to happen is when he gets destroyed, just before he self-destructs, uh, he'll spawn the stairs that let you get to the next area. So, as far as how that's working, so here's the tank. And here's a script that comes with the tank. So you can see there's a tank track at Anim. And basically all it does is it applies an offset to the main material. I've discussed this in another video. You can go watch that if you are interested in seeing how that works. So as far as the tank itself, so here's the shot that it instantiates. These are the stairs it's gonna instantiate just before it gets destroyed. And un other, unlike the other boss battle, there will be obstacles. The only real obstacles in the previous boss battle, the drone, is the drone could indeed drop uh, mines and it could drop it in all three lanes so this one the tech doesn't change lanes but there will be traps spawning in the outermost lanes so we already put the trap object there so if you go to the tank sorry the tank con script so here's the variable for the saw trap that's right there and then we just need to instantiate this so Let's copy this, although most of this we won't use. So we will instantiate. So when the shell gets instantiated, we will also instantiate that trap. So what was the name of it again? Oh, it's saw trap. Okay. So saw trap object, and we're going to use. Let's use a vector three and we'll have it spawn on the left lane. So that's negative three is the center. And then we'll have it spawn, I believe at zero. And then we'll have it also spawn. We need it to be beyond the camera's view. So that's something like negative seven. And then we want to use the saw trap's own rotation. Remember, there's three arguments. There's what's been instantiated, where it's been instantiated, and its rotation. So we'll use the saw trap's own rotation. And so this way, the shot will be, will, will uh, the shot and this will be instantiated at the same time, but the shot is being instantiated much further forward. So we'll just have to test the timing. So let's go ahead and do that. And this leaves the right lane empty. I'll probably have both lanes spawn at the same time, but we'll see. Whoops, that was definitely in the wrong place. It spawned way down there. So, oh, I'm sorry, positive seven. Negative seven is towards the camera. Sorry about that. Okay, no real pop-up. And that looks pretty good. So I want to make sure I can jump over that. I did take damage that time. I might have to adjust its size. I got over it that time. 
got hit that time. So I'll probably have to adjust the source size or adjust the collider so I don't keep taking damage. But that is working basically as intended that we've got that spawning. Now, if we, what we could do though, yeah, we said we wanted to spawn on both sides. Because, I mean, this is meant to be a boss battle, so it's meant to be kind of intense. So I was thinking about having it flip flop, but let's have it, uh, let's have it spawn on both sides. Right, so let's see if I can jump over this. Nope, it says I took damage. So like that one I time I did not take damage. So I might just be practicing a little. But again, you don't want to be too unforgiving unless you're trying to be Flappy Bird. So let's go to that sore prefab. And remember, if you change something at the prefab le uh, level, if you change the prefab itself, every time you spawn it, that spawn will replicate those changes. So we'll just go into this and you can see the collider already made it a little bit forgiving. Like it's not the height. You can see that the collider does not go all the way up to the top of the blade because I don't want to nitpick about how high you jump. I just want to make sure that you did jump because it's it's really only like four decisions. Uh, did you avoid? Did you roll? Did you jump? Or did you shoot? So there's only just so many decisions. Uh, I might also speed up the uh, the travel speed right now because right now it doesn't quite look like an endless runner. It looks a little bit more like an endless power walker. So if you are changing the speed in which everything is moving, then that means effectively you are jumping further. So I just trimmed the collider in both directions. Push that out a tiny bit. So, and also from the perspective, it's not going to really be noticeable if you do bump it a little bit. So again, you don't want to be too unforgiving. So let's just quickly run that and then we'll get into the second part of this discussion. And I was talking about as to why I find myself adding additional features, you know, feature creep and then giving up on the project. So already I avoided two, no collision because no damage is appearing in the lower left corner. So... So there we go. So that's the basis of the next boss battle. And we just kind of also have to make sure that you're not in a no-win situation where the shot is here and these are here at the same time. Because right now you cannot jump while you're moving. So if I move, I was rapid firing, I was I was hitting the space and I was not jumping because that is a control that's in place is that you cannot jump while you're moving. And you cannot move while you're jumping. So if I jump and I hit the left button, I wasn't moving until I landed. Okay, so the second thing, like I said, is why I engage in feature creep. So I talked about how I become dissatisfied and then I try adding more and more to reinvigorate uh, my enthusiasm. And I found out why that does not work. Because for me, particularly when it comes to something that is practical and readily obvious uh, as far as how to use something, I find learning exciting. I know how to do something that I did not know how to do before. Now, not all learning is like that. And sometimes if you learn something that's incredibly cumbersome and incredibly illogical, it just feels burdensome. It doesn't feel like you've really learned anything. Uh, but if you learn something that is very useful, particularly like in, you know, as far as the workplace, career, things like that, that can feel very empowering. So when I first start a new project, it's invigorating because I've learned something. I'm using something I've never used before. But then since there's no more learning, it's no longer interesting. And so what happens is no matter how many assets I add, there's no learning to it. As I said before, if you know how to make 10 assets spawn, you know how to make 100 spawn. So adding more assets doesn't reinvigorate me because there's no new learning. Adding new features might a little bit because there may be learning associated with that, but ultimately it's still the overall same project. It's, it's overall the same range of things that are being done. So knowing that about myself, that might help me be able to push forward and complete projects. Um, it's challenging to be a one person developer when it comes to games because it's all on you and knowing that I lose interest 
Uh, I'm not 100% certain how to get around that. So it helps to know, but that doesn't change the fact that it still happens. So who knows, maybe you see that in yourself too. Maybe you found yourself becoming dissatisfied with projects. Maybe that's why I, I can't say for certain. I certainly don't want to look at myself and extrapolate and presume that everyone else is the same way. But it's certainly something to keep in mind. Your game might be perfectly good. It might be a great game. You've just lost interest because you're no longer learning. And, um, you know, your choice as to whether you follow through or not. So I think that's about it for this video. I hope you found this interesting, and uh, I really do hope to finish this project. What I might do is maybe I'll put it into early as uh, um, access. Um, not that it really means anything. That's just a flag on itch.io that you just check it as early access. That way, uh, anyone who purchases it or a, a prospective buyer knows that they're getting into something that isn't complete, and that help would help me gauge interest as well as raise a few funds uh, for it because uh, as I said I am an advocate for using the unity store I certainly don't do marketing or anything for them but I do believe that for people like me who have no artistic ability it is a lifesaver it makes the difference between not being able to make a game and being able to make a game so I think that's about it so please enjoy the rest of your day